Hi, I'm Lee Tushler, Executive Editor of Design World Magazine and EE World. And I'm Kelsey Ferrante, Associate Editor. Today we're looking at an Anki Overdrive car race set, which is billed as the world's most intelligent battle racing system. This has been a pretty hot product on Amazon. It basically consists of a track and cars that race around it and shoot at each other as users manipulate them using a smartphone app. Back shortly after the end of the Civil War, when I was young, there were things called slot cars with basically the same idea as the Overdrive set. But Overdrive has a lot of 21st century improvements. The Overdrive starter kit contains sections of track that can go together in various ways that can even include jumps. One thing that's cool is that the track sections use magnets to click together because you can devise different track layouts. Each car takes a training lap before a race and basically memorizes the track using a built-in optical sensor. The cars are powered by rechargeable lithium batteries and the set comes with a recharging station where the cars sit until their batteries are ready. One other interesting thing about the cars in the set is that the cars all have weapons and certain kinds of vehicles have special weapons. Right, but these are weapons you don't need a concealed carry permit for. The creators of Overdrive used LEDs on the cars and software to give the effect of cars shooting at each other and even deploying tractor beams. To steer the cars and use the weapons, you download an app for your smartphone. I'd imagine kids would have a lot of fun with this. So how does the smartphone talk to a car and steer it? Well, removing the top of a car exposes the circuit board and the chassis. The PCB just sits in the chassis so it comes out easily. Once it's out, you can see how the car steers. There's no steering mechanism. Instead, the car uses two tiny electric motors, one to power each of the rear wheels. So the car steers by slightly increasing or decreasing the speed of each rear wheel as need be. Now one of the things we want to cover in this video is how the motors are probably controlled. That's because a widely followed teardown site analyzed the overdrive cars and botched the explanation of components related to the motor control, probably because the people involved didn't really understand it. To begin, each motor drives a wheel through a bevel gear. The teeth of the driven gear pass next to a Hall effect sensor, which is used as a way to sense wheel velocity and feed it back to the motor controller. The people at the other teardown site didn't know about Hall effect sensors, evidently. They called them guides, which makes no sense. Why does the motor need to sense wheel velocity? That gets into the topic of motor control, which is complicated enough that we could do several videos just talking about it. It can get quite mathematical, but we'll try to give a brief overview. In the case of these cars, you can't control the speed of the motors precisely enough to steer the car without some kind of a closed loop control. The reason is that just putting in a specific amount of motor current won't guarantee that the motor will spin at a precise velocity. There can be changes in the tire friction as the car moves as well as other variables that can slightly change the motor speed. To make sure you're spinning each motor at exactly the right speed, you need to measure the speed of the rotation of each axle. And that's what the Hall effect switches do. They send a speed signal back to the motor controller, which, in the case of these cars, is an STM microcontroller that has motor control capabilities built in. The STM controller notes the speed of the axle and compares it to the speed it has commanded the axle to turn. The difference between the commanded speed and the actual speed is an error term. If that error term is growing bigger, the controller speeds up the motor slightly by sending it more current. If the error gets smaller, the controller slows the motor slightly. How does the controller know when to change the speed so it can turn the car? The answer to that question gets to the clever way that Anki devised the track the cars race around. If you look at the track in normal light, it just looks to be a almost solid black. But when you view it through the right type of infrared filter, you can see a pattern, and that's what the cars see. The pattern basically consists of lines that the cars follow. There are a series of dashes with varying widths and darkness alongside the lines that apparently help the cars identify their lateral position on the track. So how does the car see those lines? There's an optical sensor chip and an infrared LED at the front of each car along with a lens assembly. The lens assembly does two things. First, it routes the light from the infrared LED down to the track so the light illuminates the spot that the optical sensor is looking at. 
second, it focuses the sensor on the track so the car can follow the line. The dashes on the track seem to be there so the optical sensor can orient the car if it gets too far away from the solid line it's trying to follow. We have an image of the track taken through a blue filter that lets near-infrared light be imaged. This image comes from Travis Deal, who founded the robotics website called Heizuk. Travis has graciously let us use it in this video. Well, so much for how the cars steer and move around the track. What else did we find on the circuit board? We found a low-energy Bluetooth chip from Nordic Semiconductor that we've seen used on several other consumer devices, and there is a battery charging chip from Linear Technology. We also found four Diodes Incorporated chips containing complementary pairs of MOSFETs and a few other NPN wideband bipolar transistors from Philips. Other than that, there's really not a whole lot else to discuss in the car because much of what these cars do takes place via software. For example, you might think they've got light sensors or something like that detecting a light from another car when they're being hit by different weapons, but there's really nothing like that here at all. Software just actuates LEDs placed at various points on the car's circuit board to help reinforce the illusion that the car has been hit by a tractor beam or a laser blaster or some such thing. But it's all software that creates the illusion of a weapon firing or a weapon hit. Well, one thing that isn't an illusion is that we're out of time. For more teardown videos, go to eeworldonline.com.